G'day, I'm Quackerjack, and welcome to another video about the Kawasaki Ninja 400. When I go down the list of most frequently asked questions I get about my bike, the topic of how well it does on the highway is definitely right at the top. What you guys want to know is, does it have enough power for the motorway? What sort of RPMs does it sit at on there? Is it comfortable and suitable for touring? And is it affected by the wind that much? Now, while I did answer some of these questions in the full review of the bike, today we are going to be going into a bit more detail and I'm going to be answering in depth the questions that you guys have about the Ninja 400. Spoiler alert, it does well with two of them and not so well with another. So, for the first question, does it have enough power for the highway? Here in Australia, the speed limit on most parts of the highway or motorways is 100 to 110 kilometers, and most people usually cruise between 100 to 120 k's. At those speeds, in top or sixth gear, the Ninja 400 is sitting at around 6 to 7,000 RPM. And with the stock exhaust, it's actually pretty quiet, with the sound of it just sort of fading away behind the road and wind noise. There is more than enough power to overtake and keep myself safe if I need to quickly get myself out of the way. And with a pull of the throttle, you can easily get yourself to 130 and 140. It doesn't feel like the engine is screaming or too high in the rev range to be comfortable. And while there are some vibrations from the motor, it isn't too bad. So for power, the Ninja 400 is definitely good enough for the highway. Also, a quick side note, I know a lot of people from the Philippines ask, and as far as I'm aware, I think the Ninja 400 is expressway legal. Because even though the actual engine size is 399cc, as long as the manufacturer claims it to be 400 on the paperwork, you should be sweet. Moving on to comfort for longer rides, and again, the Ninja 400 does a pretty good job. The seat is comfortable enough, and I think I could go for about an hour without wanting to stop and get off and stretch my legs and stuff. Because of the seating position, there isn't too much strain on the wrists, but I also have enough room to lean forward and I often find myself chilling, just riding along with one hand on the throttle and leaning on the tank. And again, as for vibrations, it isn't too bad at regular highway speeds. I've ridden on bikes where the handle pegs and seat have shaken me up like a can of Coke, and thankfully this isn't the case for the Ninja. The mirrors also remain stable while you're riding and you can see clearly through them, which wasn't the case for the biggest Z650 that I rode on, which just sort of buzzed all over the place. If you've watched my videos discussing seat height and ergonomics, you'd know that for someone of my height, the wind also seems to hit around mid-helmet. And when on the highway, that does mean that you get a bit of helmet turbulence. Thankfully, there is enough room on the seat to scooch back a little bit and duck down to get out of that wind. If you're looking to do a lot of highway miles on the Ninja 400, I think you could do it stock but I would recommend something with a bit more padding like the comfort seat from Kawasaki and getting a taller windscreen as well just to sort of eliminate some of that wind. Other than that though, I think the Ninja 400 is pretty comfortable for the highway thanks to its relaxed seating position and ergonomics. Now we come to how the bike is affected by wind and this is where the story isn't so great. The Kawasaki has a wet weight of 169 kilograms and is a really light little sport bike. While that means that it cuts through the air pretty well, is nimble and great for twisty roads, when you come across gusts of wind or the turbulence from a truck going past, you are definitely going to feel it. In fact, it can actually be difficult staying in a straight line on even a moderately windy day on the highway, as a sideways gust of wind easily has the potential to move you over in the lane. For new riders, this could be dangerous, as a momentary lapse of concentration could potentially put you into an unsafe position on the road. If you keep your wits about you and gauge it, you can keep yourself steady. But while riding on a busy motorway with a lot of cars and a truck goes past you, it can be scary. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can do about this, and this problem isn't just on the Ninja 400. It's got more so to do with the lightness of the bike. I'm a larger rider too, weighing around 90 kilograms, and even with that extra weight on the bike, we can still be nudged around. Thankfully, the bike is nimble enough to be able to quickly adjust your riding position in the lane and make sure you don't stay in that compromising spot for too long. Now, if you're looking at this bike and wondering if it can still be a tourer, I'd say yes. It has enough power for the highway, it's moderately comfortable when stock, and what I haven't mentioned in this video is that it also gets pretty great mileage too. I'm talking upwards of 350 kilometers of highway riding. Yes, it will be pushed around by the wind a little bit on the highway, but I wouldn't let that stop you from considering it. In terms of cheap do-it-all bikes that do well in most categories, it's hard to beat the Ninja 400. So there you have it. Overall, the Ninja 400 does pretty well with highway riding. What else would you like to know about the bike? Also, big thanks to Soph and my mum for helping me shoot this video. It's the first time that I've actually had someone else on hand to help me out. I write, shoot and edit all these ninja videos, um, and it's really cool to have someone else helping me to get shots that I wouldn't normally be able to get. Oh hey, uh, you guys should actually also come find me on Instagram, at quackerjack underscore. We have a lot of great moto related chats on there that we couldn't normally have on YouTube. I'm putting a lot of extra effort in to bring you guys the best quality videos that I can. 
So make sure to leave a like and hit subscribe if you haven't already to join our moto loving family. And until next time, see ya. I smell fish and chips. Spoiler alert, it does well with two of them and not so well with another. Shut up. Not enough power to. Power to overtake and keep myself safe. Oh my god, shut the hell up. Scream. Jesus. by a flying freaking lorikeet. Oh, go away. It's gonna be one of those videos. Because of the seating position, there isn't... Everyone's out and about today. Shut up! <laughs> ha! Ha! The things I do for you. <laughs>